I am Traveler 3468. One of thousands of travelers around the world who have come from a time when life is all but wiped out. To save humanity. To change the path. Hi there, and welcome to Baseball by Design. I am SportsLogos.net minor league baseball correspondent Paul Caputo, broadcasting live, as always, from the Sunday Helmet Hall of Fame in my basement in Fort Collins, Colorado. This episode, we're going to be discussing the Arkansas Travelers. You'll be hearing some interviews from the last couple of months, uh, including from during the offseason and on opening day proper and from just less than a week ago. So there's a lot of conversations spread out over a certain amount of time, but it all comes together to form the tapestry of a story about uh, a pretty great brand out there in the minor league baseball world. Later on in the episode, I'll be speaking with Jason Klein of Brandios. And I'll be speaking with actual Arkansan Holly Sanders live from the Arkansas Travelers opening day game in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Dan Simon, as always, is back with a Studio Simon Stumper. Right now, I'm so pleased to be joined by Stephen Davis, who is the broadcaster and director of baseball operations for the Arkansas Travelers. Stephen, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Oh, man, I'm so pleased to be talking to you. So looking forward to, by the time this actually drops, I will have been to opening day in Little Rock, Arkansas, to see the the Travelers play. It'll be my first time there at that ballpark, my second time ever to Little Rock, Arkansas. I was there in 2005 for one night once. So this is, uh, I'm looking forward to getting to really experience Little Rock. And by that, I mean, go to a Travelers game. The The Travelers are their their brand is deeply rooted in Arkansas tradition. The, uh, the the tradition of the the traveler is very specific to Arkansas. Can you tell me what that story is? What is the Arkansas traveler? Well, it, it goes back a, a long time, well before the baseball team, and the baseball team's been around quite a while. Back to 1901 uh, is when the Travelers baseball team was founded, but. Uh, there's various stories uh, and various legends of what the Arkansas Traveler was, but the, the, the most well-regarded and most well-accepted version uh, is that the Arkansas Traveler was a famous minstrel uh, who roamed the Ozark Mountains selling wares and singing songs and claimed to be from Arkansas. And obviously he was a traveler uh, and he became pretty famous and that has spawned not only the baseball team, but uh, for example, when Bill Clinton was running for president, a lot of the folks who went out and were running his campaigns were called Arkansas Travelers. There's been books written uh, about it. So it's it's a famous phrase associated with the state. And I think a lot of that is not only due to the legend of the, the wandering minstrel, uh, if you will, but also the baseball team, because uh, as I said, going back to 1901, uh, the baseball team was the Little Rock Travelers, and they have never changed the name uh, for any reason, uh, it's the second longest running continuous nickname uh, in minor league baseball behind only the Buffalo Bisons. So uh, you've got uh, you know more history than you can shake a stick at there. Uh, but it uh, it goes back to the, the legend of this man who would sell wares and sing songs in the Ozark Mountains for folks coming by. It's it's such a great name for a team and it's such a great reason for a team to have have this brand and to have this identity. There was a uh, a famous painting by Edward Payson Washburn, and I don't have this at the top of my head here. This is I know this because I wrote about the team for SportsLogos.net back in 2015, and this painting features the the traveler himself and the minstrel sitting on a barrel playing playing the fiddle or the, or the violin, and he's he's riding a horse. So the brand that you all have is based on. I presume this horse from the painting or a horse that a, a traveler would, would be on. Uh, but it's interesting to me that the, you know, the team would be called the travelers and the, you know, their identity would be the, the horse rather than the traveler himself. People like this horse. This is a, this is a pretty, if I may say it's pretty kick-ass logo, right? Like it's uh, it's, and I, I live out here in Colorado. I'm in Broncos country. So it looks a little, you know, sort of Broncos ish. Uh, but people seem to really enjoy this this logo. I know that you started with the team in 2017, and so that was after they they rebranded, very much needed rebrand. Uh, but this this current brand, people really seem to enjoy. 
Yeah, absolutely. And even going back to the more the older logos, if you will, it was you know the, just a, a capital A with Travs underneath, or, or they had the slogan uh, "Greatest Show on Turf" for a while. Yeah. Uh, different things like that uh, for the A Travs. That's always been a, a shortened nickname as well. But uh, the horse, as you said, ha has has tied it in. And some people think that the name Traveler associated with a horse had to do with the, the Confederate general in, in the Civil War, Robert E. Lee. Because his horse was ironically named Traveler as well, but it has nothing to do with that. Uh, it has all to do with, the, as you said, the minstrel and his horse. And I don't know why the horse got picked over the, the human necessarily, uh, but maybe it's just something to do with animals. Uh, and it was an easier sell, but obviously uh, the, the horse has been in the logo. Uh, a man riding a horse has been in the logo at different times, but the, the, the rebranded logo... Uh, which happened in 2014, uh, does look really good. It still looks good to this day, almost a decade later. Uh, the stylized horse in the A, uh, and, the, you know, uh, Ace is the horse's name uh, for the mascot that roams the ballpark. Uh, but he got a buddy in 2014 as well. And uh, <laughs> the secondary mascot uh, of the possum, Odie, uh, has become as popular uh, as anything. And, uh, you know, Odie might even be more popular at times than Ace. He, he looks a little more approachable. Uh, for some young kids, uh, I know my my four year old daughter would rather go give Odie a hug than uh, than go deal with the the six foot four inch ace uh, in his uh, official regal uniform uh, when they see him at the ballpark. So I'll have to I'll have to look out for Odie the the official mascot. the The logo of Odie is you know it's a it's a possum wearing overalls uh, with one strap done and one strap undone. And he's got a bat on his shoulder, and he's sort of running. He looks mostly friendly, except for some some fairly sharp looking teeth. It's interesting that you say that your daughter is, you know, more likely to go give Odie a hug because the the logo itself. I think a four year old girl might be afraid of those sharp teeth. I'm a little afraid of those sharp teeth on on Odie the possum here. <laughs> yeah, and you know the, the mascot suit is different, uh, and you know a lot of a lot of folks are like, "Oh, Arkansas, you've got a possum wearing overalls." You know, it, it's it gets stereotyped, but it it, it has really been embraced by Arkansans. Uh, and as we said, Odie, it, it's a smiling possum. Uh, it, it's very popular and fun, and not at all like a regular possum, uh, which you do see once in a while if you get in the right spot uh, in Arkansas and around Little Rock. In fact, a few years ago we had one. Uh, run out through the tarp one day uh, oh, when nice. I rolled it out to, to cover the infield uh, <laughs> in the morning when it was raining. The possum had, had come in uh, from who knows where, gotten into the ballpark and uh, decided to uh, to take refuge in the tarp until they started to roll it out that morning and uh, surprised everybody on the grounds crew. Uh, but uh, yeah, Odie's, uh, Odie's quite popular and Odie not only is popular as the mascot, but uh, you know with the, with the rebranding uh, and the Marvel stuff that's coming on this year, when those new logos came out, Mm -hmm. The Marvel folks uh, and, and minor league baseball picked to go with Odie hmm. uh, for the superhero logo for the Travelers as well. So we've got the stylized flexing uh, Odie the Possum coming out of a trash can now uh, as an alternate Travelers logo as well. So you've got Ace, uh, the traditional horse logo, uh, but then the Possum now on top of it to uh, keep with the tradition of Arkansas and all its good natured people. So who do you think would win a fight, Odie coming out of a trash can or the Rocket City Trash Panda coming out of a trash can? Well, if you're going to look at the pictures just off the drawings, you got to go with the, the Marvel mascot, Odie, coming out of the trash can because totally. he's got some gigantic biceps. <laughs> the, the, those traps look like something you'd see on a, a wrestler in the WWE or something. So uh, he's pretty ferocious coming out of that can. But uh, yeah, we don't, we're not going to mess with the trash pandas. They're in the Southern <laughs> League. We're in the Texas League. They they can have their area. We'll take our area. Both double A, but uh, but yeah, different different leagues for sure. So, it, so when you hear Odie, when I first heard it, it to me sounded like O D I E, like Odie the the dog in the Garfield comic, but it's O T E Y. Does that name have significance? What does O T O Odie mean? It has huge significance, uh, and in fact, if you just see it spelled, people look at it and go, "Is that O T? Is it O T? Is it O T?" But it, it, it's named for a man, uh, in fact, one who is very significant in Traveler's history, R.C. Odie, uh, who was uh, an Arkansas native uh, and ended up playing for the Travelers for several years. And after his playing career ended, uh, became a, an integral part of the Travelers' day-to-day -day operations, running the ballpark uh, and was the park superintendent, uh, held that position for almost 30 years. He, he's a legendary figure uh, in Traveler's history. In fact, uh, R.C. Odie and, and the current park superintendent, Greg Johnston, have the last, uh, I would say, 
50, 60 plus years covered in that role now. I don't want to give away how long Greg's been with the team, but uh, he's been working there in some form at, at whatever ballpark the Travelers have called home uh, since he was a kid working in the concession stands uh, in various roles in the summer. Uh, but th those two figures uh, actually have suites named for them at Dickey Stevens Park. That's how significant they are. And then uh, obviously R.C. Ode significant enough to get the mascot. And even our uh, uh, club vice president and CEO, Rusty Meeks, has a dog named Odie. So uh, th that name is legendary uh, in, in Traveler's lore, R.C. Odie. And it it's only appropriate, I think, that he's got uh, a mascot name for him that'll last forever now. Absolutely. That's great. I'm glad I asked that question. Often, you know, you see with, with minor league teams when they rebrand, there's sort of a clamoring or a nostalgia for the old brand. The the one that had the sort of flying A with Travs underneath it, and it said greatest game on dirt above it, really needed to be redone, right? Like that was not a, a great logo. Is there a clamoring? Is there a nostalgia for that for that brand? I mean, obviously, the, the one that you have now is so much better. Do, do people clamor for that old one? There's some folks, uh, you know, I'll, I'll run into somebody once in a while that says, hey, why, where's the, uh, you know, this logo, or why can't we integrate this logo a little bit more? But if you look at the, the variety of logos we have, uh, and over the uniforms they've worn in the last 10 years now, there's some variation of pretty much every traditional logo the Travs have worn on there. Uh, the, the, for example, the, the road hat we have is black with a gray bill, mm -hmm. and it's the A Travs logo. It's oh. a big capital A, and it says Travs underneath. So you still have that old school uh, being shown there. Uh, one of the white jerseys has a, a patch on the sleeve that's the new stylized version from the rebrand in 2014 of the, the greatest game on dirt logo. It's got the state of Arkansas in it and written uh, in small letters on the top over the uh, Arkansas-ish diamond logo with stars in it. It says greatest game on dirt and at the bottom since 1901. So the, the history is in there everywhere, but mostly what I hear from friends uh, and fans when they look at the uniforms is why can't we use this logo more or why don't we use this logo more? It's hard because when you have so much history and you've had so many different logos that look good or that people have liked or fallen in love with, it's hard to get them all in there at a certain point. But uh, we, we've got enough stuff that uh, if people see it and get in the team store and find it, uh, they might buy a hat or a jersey just because it's got a certain logo on it. All right. So this is the the, the final question that I'm going to ask you here because you mentioned the team store. At the mm -hmm. time of this recording, the double A season hasn't started Major League Baseball season started yesterday. The AAA season starts today. So baseball is ramping up right now. The Traveler game will be my first live game of the 2023 season. The very first thing I do every time I go to any ballpark is I head straight to the team store and I pick out something with, uh, you know, with, with my favorite logo on it, with something that really speaks to me. In your opinion, when I go to the team store, which is the logo that I should be looking at to to find something on a shirt or a hat uh, and and uh, carry home with me? Well, from what you said, uh, I think you really like the the traditional A horse logo, the, mm. the the primary mark, which would be on the the main hat we have, the all black hat. I don't know. Obviously, you're a hat guy. Just look in the background there. You've got yeah. the, the hats on the walls. <laughs> uh, so I would start with that. But, uh, you know, the 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 walking Odie possum with the bat over the shoulder uh, is very popular as well. And I almost feel like now with the logos that have been in use for, for about 10 years now for the travelers, people know what the A and the horse is. But I feel like when people see that walking possum, they almost think Arkansas in their head as well. So I would right. recommend one of those two. And those are the two, uh, I would call them our primary and secondary logos. They're the ones that get used the most. Uh, I'd go with something from, from one of those. But, uh, you know, for, for your role where you're going to have people coming in probably and looking at your collection, I'd stick to that primary and go with the the, the stately horse head uh, inside the A. So let, let's, let's go with Ace inside the A on the primary logo. Okay, I like it. I like it. I'll get in there. I'll check it out. I'm not afraid of a silly logo. I, I have, you know, I, I have some pretty silly logos on these back here. Uh, I'll be wearing my Burlington sock puppets hat to work today. So it's, uh, you you know, I'm, I'm okay with a silly logo. So in addition to obviously the travelers, I mean, minor league baseball teams do a lot of alternate identities. Uh, you mentioned the Marvel series that minor league baseball is doing and your involvement with that, but also you unveiled over the off season. We covered this on sportslogos.net, the mad mallards. Can you tell me what the what the Mad Mallards brand is about? 
Well, hey, you know, we're joining that uh, alternate identity craze this year. You know, we, we've done the, the, the Copa series with, with minor league baseball, going to the, the Hispanic heritage uh, and Spanish jerseys. We have, we'll have specialty jerseys, but we're going with the alternate identity, a full rebrand for a week at the beginning of August this year, Mad Mallards. Uh, and it's kind of self-explanatory. Mallard, it's kind of duck. Duck season and duck hunting, huge in the state of Arkansas. So we're tying it in with that. Even though duck season technically runs outside of baseball season, uh, it's our way of helping to celebrate a, a great Arkansas tradition that runs as deep as baseball uh, or deeper in a lot of families around the state. Uh, and we hope that all fans will, quote unquote, heed the call of the mallard uh, and come to Dickie Stevens Park to join in the fun. We're, we're going to have some great stuff planned for that week. Haven't released all the details yet, but obviously... Uh, a full rebrand of uniforms and hats, uh, and those will be available through the store as well. It's a, it's an orange and green color scheme with the with a nice mallard head on it. Uh, and we had a, a group in Little Rock, uh, a branding firm, Eric, Rob, and Isaac that helped us out with that. And it, it's a really good looking logo, and uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun for the fans. We had a great reaction when we released it uh, towards the end of the off season. Uh, fans were really excited about. Uh, the Mallard name uh, and being able to have duck uh, themed gear to wear to the games. And I'm sure folks are going to come in their duck hunting stuff. I'm sure there's going to be duck calls brought to the ball games that week. Uh, should be a lot of fun when the Travs rebrand as the Mad Mallards. Well, and this is going to further complicate the choices I have to make in the team store there. So that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure the case. Uh, Steven, thank you so much. I'm so looking forward to catching up with you by the time this drops. That will have already happened. Uh, looking forward to catching an Arkansas Travelers game. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Where can people find you on social media? Social media, Instagram, uh, and Twitter are the two big ones at Stephen Davis PXP, Stephen with a V, Stephen Davis PXP. Uh, we got all the Trav stuff on there uh, as we get rolling here in the next few days once the team gets to town. And obviously, as the season keeps rolling along, uh, we'll have good content on there every day and then on the radio every night for the games as well uh 106 7 the buzz 2 uh in little rock but obviously uh with the wonders of the internet we're available through the uh milb game day stuff and uh all over if folks want to to listen to the Travs games or pick us up on milb tv as well awesome well good luck with all of your other broadcasting responsibilities i know that you're you're very busy right now with all of your other sports that you broadcast and getting ready for the baseball season. So Steven, thanks for coming on and uh, I'll see you. Uh, I'll come by and knock on the, the, the press room door and say hi in, in 12 days. Absolutely. Paul, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Great. Thanks so much. All right, everyone. Welcome back. I am so pleased to welcome back to the show. My friend now who I've met actually in person in San Diego at their studio, Jason Klein of Brandios. Jason, how are you doing? Fantastic. It was so fun to have you out here. Oh my gosh. That was, I was, uh, I'm still using my Brandios Sharpies that you sent me away with. Those are great. They're so, magic. They last 15% uh, longer than, than normal Sharpies. Just because of the branding, right? I guess. I don't know. That's what I'm told. Uh, uh, no, that was a, <laughs> that was a really fun experience. And the idea when I went out there was that you and I were going to record a couple segments for the podcast uh, about a couple of teams and then I would just, you know, we would do those live and in person and we just got to talking. We just, yeah. the episode just turned into us talking and I got to have Casey on the, on the show for the first time. And we never got to talking about the actual logos. So, yeah, I like how like Casey was like this sort of like Sasquatch in the background. <laughs> and you were like, man, do I, did I have a sighting? Am I get right. to, have to talk to him? And then he sat down. It was great. I'm so happy. I mean, he, the guy is a machine. Like a, a mm. like a a creative machine, and he just is like nose to the grindstone, like just like let's create, let's go. And so he's like, um, he's like, oh, Jason, you talk about the stuff. I just want to like, I want to, <laughs> I want to like have fun and create, and yeah, it's great. Well, it is time to talk about the stuff. Now we finally have the chance to actually talk about these these brands that we were yeah. going to talk about in San Diego. We're back on Zoom here. The Arkansas Travelers, yeah, uh, who, who have this brand based in this like this legendary story of uh, of a minstrel player and uh, a guy traveling through Arkansas, and you know, so you created this logo. Well, I'll just ask. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Let you talk about it. What were the what were your considerations when you were creating this travel this new Travelers logo back in 2014? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of like 
questions about sort of like how the name came like what was it about there was at one point like there was um you know it was like a guy sort of came through on a horse um traveler was also like i think the name of robert e lee's horse mm -hmm. and so there was an era where they had like uh that going on and we decided like yeah like it's not aging well <laughs> so like you know we, let's come up with something new and uh we did have this idea of sort of like these couple themes one was this idea of um sort of traveling and what travels and you know sort of the um, the traveler um and also this idea of the horse so that so we're like okay that let's let's like start there and when we went to visit um little rock man it was awesome i mean little rock um known for the clintons we actually saw the clintons in the airport which is a really Did weird you really yeah like we were just like it was like we were like we were like like tsa like going through and like oh there's like security and a bunch of people and they were together and it was uh yeah it was it was weird that it was like wild. it was like the like full on like you know, like what is Arkansas known for? You're going to get to experience that all yeah. at once, right? Yeah. Or what like Little Rock is known for. Yeah. So that was sort of, uh, that was funny. So the, um, uh, but you know, we got to go to Cotham's. Um, it was just like a general store slash um, burger joint that is like way out um, off the beaten path. God, we had some good barbecues, I'm thinking now. Oh, Not at Cotham's, but Cotham's was known for the hubcap burger, which was like, I think it's a giant burger that you like they serve like or they used to serve or maybe they did at the time like served in a hubcap plate. Right. But this place kind of felt like um uh like a cracker barrel like but like maybe in like kind of like a bayou kind of vibe. <laughs> does that make sense? It does. And it's and funny then, to like, me that you're that you're talking about food because I just spent uh, I was there for opening day this year uh, in Little Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and my my prevailing memory of Little Rock is basically the food. Just feeling like if I stayed yeah. there for more than a week, I was going to weigh three hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny that that's like the first thing that you launched into here was the, the food at this place. Well, yeah. So like um, Paul and Rusty, who are our guides, they're like, "Oh man, we got to go to uh, we got to go to Cotham's, the Hubcap Burger." <laughs> and again, I don't remember if it was in the, in, served in the Hubcap. It was the shape of a Hubcap, but it was definitely like it felt like a dusty. It felt like a dusty kind of Cracker Barrel, like in a sort of swamp like on a on a creek um uh, kind of like in a swampy area and it was legit i was like man this is like americana at its best and um and unfortunately i think i got a word that like the place burned to the ground there was a fire oh no so um but anyways there was a lot like the architecture was like very there's a lot of limestone architecture and sort of like you know um we went to the capitol building a lot of like things being chiseled like it was sort of like yeah strength and strength and and um determination and so i think we really got this idea of like okay how do we create um this brand that was okay we're gonna involve a horse we like this like limestone chiseledness and so that really became you know the first round of concepts as i'm sort of looking at them as we speak was yeah. like a lot of like chiseled horses like chiseled mm -hmm. horses a lot of like stars um really inspired by the arkansas flag so like the diamond was iconic the stars and the diamond so there was a lot of like references to this like uh you know, sort of stars and the diamond um they also have a trademark called the greatest game on dirt yeah. Um, which is their their slogan. It's kind of like greatest show on earth with Ringling Brothers. It was the greatest game on dirt. They trademarked it, um, but they had kind of used it here and there. And I was like, no, let's make it emblematic. They'd been around since 1901, so right. over 100 years old. So there's all these things that were like, oh, let's just get them in. So uh, early concepts had um, uh, the state of Arkansas because they were the Arkansas. You know, there's the Northwest Arkansas, but there was like they were like the original Arkansas team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had this sort of like chiseled um, sleeve patch we started working on, which was like the state of Arkansas, and it was chiseled. Yeah. It had a big like ribbon that said the greatest game on dirt since 1901. Yeah. Um. So it was really like, okay, how do we emblematic that? How do we bring the horse in, the limestone chisel? So that was the first round. Um. And then. Um, there was also a character now up at that point, I think they might've had a horse that was more like a donkey costume. Wasn't great. They right. think about blowing it up, but we, Casey did this like little, like swamp possum. Yep. Um, 
and it was like it had like a little bowler hat um and it was a swamp possum and casey i think was kind of inspired by cothams right it was like oh man like uh-huh. What would a character like that worked at Cotham's or like, you know, it was like a, like a, you know, baseball has like bat dogs that retrieve baseball bats um, yeah. from the, from the uh, batter's box. Like what if we had like a swamp possum that was like a bus boy. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, they really caught on to that. And the second round went straight to digital um, and we brought in who, what became Odie, O T E Y. Yeah. Um, the swamp possum and it was uh you know again a running character um wearing like a one strap um overall with a bowler hat and it really started to lean into that story of the traveler um Mm -hmm. sort of coming through traveling through arkansas um i think they wanted to stay with the red um they were red white and blue there's a lot of red white and blue teams at the time so we were like could we do like maybe red with like you know gray um so like maroon crimson with you know scarlet and then some like you know light grays and then we had this idea that we wanted to do um a camouflage because camo was everywhere and we're like oh man what if we created our own custom camouflage and so we took photos from um the swamps that we had and um there was like swamp moss and then we like um we embedded like baseballs like like uh, easter eggs in this camouflage and invented this brand new swamp camo um which became a a staple and this is when like we were we we had this thought about like um you know they're sublimating jerseys for theme nights could we sublimate like on field jerseys so like year round and have their alternate jersey not just be like um, I don't know, like military appreciation camo, but like it's their own branded proprietary camouflage. Right. So swamp camo came out of that. What was the thinking in, uh, because, you know, they've had a number of brands over the years. Like you said, they've been around since 1901. They were the little rock travelers, right? And yeah. then they, in 1960, uh, then in 1961, they switched to the Arkansas travelers. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the other brands that they've had in the past, including one that featured Robert E. Lee and some sort of, you know, pretty cartoonish kind of rudimentary, if we're being honest, logos with, you know, horse drawings and whatnot. But yours, the one that you all did in 2014, is the first one to pretty much ex- focus exclusively on the horse rather than the traveler himself. Uh, what yeah. was the thinking in focusing on the horse rather than the character who's featured in the in these these the, in this minstrel? Um. I think also at the time there were a, a lot of and 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 I'm I'm sure I someone was going to pull me on this one but like I feel like there was a lot of cartoony horses at the time mm. and there wasn't a lot of like serious stuff I think I mean the Arkansas idea was like let's just be like the state's team that was really like you know we've been the state's team for years northwest arkansas moved in and then it was like oh, i think there was like a little bit of competition there like, like, <laughs> like you know like uh we want to be the state's team we've been the state's team so let's be the state's team um so there was a lot of like there, yeah there's a lot of like um i think bravado is a way to look at it you know both yeah. in the logos both in the um choosing arkansas over uh little rock and then the horse, they're just really in the horse. They feel like they could do more of the horse. The horse could be a character which is huggable. People, mascots are really creepy. I mean, <laughs> it's really hard to do a good person mascot um, without being creepy. And so it was like, all right, let's just lean into the horse. And then I think it was just like Casey just has a gag to the swamp possum. And then um, that became um, you know, Odie. And then they wound up like um at the time we started working with custom characters who is a um they are like the ferrari of mascot costumes right uh out of los angeles they do all the disney characters and nickelodeon and oh gosh um dreamworks like all like the famous like the best in the business characters and we had been working with them for a long time and they created you got to google these images like the incredible mascot costumes they like created a like legitimate um swamp possum the swamp possum mascot they did is one of the best characters like it like is a it's like a it's like a a six foot seven foot like real possum that's like lovable and cuddly and it's realistic 
It is yeah. the, one of the best costumes ever. Like well, my favorite. Like, yeah. Like I said, I was there on opening day, and there were I I should say there were a lot of kids hugging Odie the Swamp Possum. There, it's it's true. He was he was getting swarmed as we were walking around on opening day. Okay, and if you go to Google and you search uh, search Odie O T E Y costume, um, yeah. not only will you see some great costumes, but there's an awesome photo um, of Odie and a real possum. Yeah, and you just go like. Dang, man, that costume's <laughs> legit. Like, it's legit, a legit possum. Like, uh, it's so good. It's not an exact replica of the the logo OD that you guys came up with. Yeah, yeah, it's more, more like interpretational, yeah. Well, this is a fun brand. I was, you know, it was my introduction to the 2023 baseball season. And now that I've been to Little Rock, I feel like I have more of a connection to this place and, and to this logo and... I, I, I do have to say, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't like to cast dispersions here. I don't like to say anything negative, but the logo that you all replaced with this one, the one that they had before this was <laughs> terrible. I mean, it, it was a terrible logo. So it, it, it had a, uh, yeah, it, it, it needed some TLC. It, it looked, it looked like something that came out of like, like the local AAA office and not AAA baseball, but like the, uh, the, the automotive, Oh, automobile. The DM yeah, exactly. it was a DMV logo. Is that what you're exactly? Uh... It looked like a DMV logo. So this was a this was a merciful. Hey, if you work at the direct. DMV, we're not knocking on you. We're just <laughs> saying if there was a logo that came out of the DMV. Right, right. I'm sure the DMV has great logos. But yeah, the the logo that you all replaced with with this, you know, this is it's fun brand. I love the red and the black. Uh, I just feel like that's a really striking color combination too. So yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun logo set. It was great to be there in person and and see it in real life and then get to talk to you about it. Thanks for coming on. And you just said how hard it is to not make a person character logo creepy. We're about to go talk about a person logo uh, in our next episode here. We are, we are. I set myself up. Jason will be back in a couple of weeks in another episode, this one on the Frisco Rough Riders. Jason, thanks for coming on, and we'll talk to you again soon. I love it. All right, everyone, welcome back. I am so excited to be in Little Rock, Arkansas, for opening day at the ball game here in the, here in Little Rock, Arkansas Travelers, opening day, top of the first inning. I'm with Holly Sanders, who is the... I'm Assistant Chief of Education with Arkansas Game of Fish, and I'm glad to be here you are with Arkansas Game and Fish, a real live Arkansan. Mm-hmm. I have asked you, if you if you don't mind, as an Arkansan, would you tell me, please, in in your words, the parable of the Arkansas Traveler? Sure. I mean, uh, of course, watching the Travelers, the Traveler story has been around a long time, but it's actually a folk story. Uh, so you could probably find several versions, but the basis of it is we had a uh, a fella um, here in Arkansas that was a politician, unsuccessful politician, oh. um, a planter, and he roamed the uh, outskirts of Arkansas campaigning, and uh, and he was a great entertainer. So he came back with a story uh, about the Arkansas traveler, and basically what it is is you had a city slicker that uh, kind of got lost in the woods and needed a place to stay, and he found a squatter and uh, knocked on the door and said, hey, can I have some lodging and maybe uh, a beverage and some food? And the squatter said, uh, heck no. Oh. No, you can't have that. Uh, and But he was uh, kind of picking a tune on a fiddle, and he kind of played the same tune over and over and over. And so the traveler was like, hey, you know, I can help you finish that song. I can give you the rest of it. And the squatter's like, yeah. And so uh, he was a musician, and he took out his fiddle. He basically did a bridge of the song and finished it out. And the squatter said, you know what? You can have my whiskey. You can have my food. You can have my bed, you know, for helping me finish that song. And I'm sure his wife was glad he finished the song, too, because, you know, it's pretty repetitious. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know what the song was? Uh, it's pretty popular. Um, it kind of goes da 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 it right. was that song. No, that's, that's not it. No, that's not it. Is that, that's the turkey and the straw. <laughs> oh. What a song right. is it? It's the B song. Do you want me to do that? that they were, they, the, the crowd cheering right now is not cheering anything that happened in the baseball game. It was cheering your singing, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it turned into a, a a famous song it has a painting you know several stories but it did have a um 
kind of an odd period in Arkansas because the Arkansas Traveler kind of got a reputation as like a hillbilly type story. Okay. And so Arkansas didn't really want the reputation of being hillbillies. But really it's a story about urban and rural people, you know, getting along. You okay. know, and connecting and helping each other out. So. Well, certainly this team has embraced it, right? Because that's the team name. Their logo is a horse, which my understanding is that's the the, the horse that yes. is in the story from the traveler. Yes, yes, he was on a horse. In fact, if you look at the painting, the Arkansas Traveler, you'll see the traveler on the horse and the squatter, and you know, at the home, and them, you know, negotiating for a place to stay uh, through music. Well, this is one of those nicknames that I think, you know, a lot of people hear it, they hear travelers, they think, you know, maybe it has to do with just sort of westward expansion or, or something, right? And so it's uh, it's really interesting to me as someone not from this area. I've been to Little Rock once before in my lifetime in 2005. So it's obviously, I mean, it's something that I was not familiar with. The, as you know, as listeners of the podcast know, the premise of this podcast is you can learn the story of America by understanding why minor league baseball teams have the, the names that they sure. have and the logos that they have. So this is another great story from another great part of the country that I didn't really know anything about. So I am so appreciative that you were here to, to share that story with me. So what do you think? So here we have the uh, this brand with the with the horse, and then there's some you know sort of chiseled. The text is like chiseled out of granite. They've got some alternate logos, obviously. You know, they've got some, the Diamantes for the Copa brand. They've got the Mad Mallards coming up. They've got, you know, their second mascot is uh, uh, is the the possum. Yeah. A- outside of the main brand, you know, we have any uh, any particular favorites for the uh, the alternates? Yeah, well, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the Mad Mallards because I'm, I'm not sure how Mad Mallards get, but uh, <laughs> I will definitely be getting a T-shirt for sure. But I was a little, personally, I was a little disappointed in... The possum, because Arkansas has strived to get away from that hillbilly image. Oh, yeah. And the possum has the whole overalls and all of that. I mean, nothing against possums. I love possums. They eat a lot of ticks. Um, <laughs> they eat a lot of ticks. <laughs> but, this is another thing I just learned. Possums but, eat a lot of ticks. Right, but I, but I, was just, uh, I was just surprised that they went that route as far as Arkansas with the hillbilly mm, type okay. route. All right. but, Plays uh, into yeah. a stereotype. Yeah. All right. Well, Holly, thank you so much. The Mad Mallards, that'll be a fun one for definitely, sure. Definitely. I got myself a Diamantes t-shirt. Um, are you going to get an ice cream helmet later? Oh, um, probably. For sure I'm going to get a broad. I know that. A broad. Okay. Because this could be the first <laughs> helmet in your Helmet Sunday collection. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, thank you so much. All it's right, been thanks. fun. Thanks. All right, everyone, welcome back. Very happy to be joined once again by my very good friend, Dan Simon, who is here with a Studio Simon Stumper, except it's the alternate brand of Studio Simon Stumpers. If there's anyone who's an expert in alternate brands, it's Dan Simon. And here we are rebranding this week with Two Truths and a Lie, which I associate with, you know, like networking events and icebreakers before like work meetings. You know, you play Two Truths and a Lie. You got to make up two facts about yourself and then one lie about yourself. And then you have to guess which one is which. We're doing that minor league baseball logo style here with Dan Simon. Dan, hello. Welcome back. How are you? I am fantastic. Always happy to be back here trying to, not trying to stump you, trying to ask a question that you'll get right. So um, okay. let's see if uh, if you can do that again today. So, okay, we're talking about the Arkansas Travelers. Yeah. And... Um, Two previous versions of Arkansas Travelers logos featured an individual riding a horse with a baseball in its mouth, Um, the horse, not the individual, (laughs) um, jumping through the open space in the middle of the letter A. Okay, can you Mm -hmm. picture that in your head? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our two truths and a lie question today asks, which of the following was not one of the individuals riding the horse. Okay. Was it A, a Confederate soldier, B, a baseball player, or C, a Southern colonel? Now, as opposed to a soldier, a, a la Colonel Sanders. Right. I can, now this is, it's very rare with these stumpers that you ask me something where I actually have some familiarity with the subject matter, whether that actually leads to a correct answer. I don't know. 
I can picture one of the logos having a baseball player facing the wrong direction on the horse. He's facing backwards instead of facing <laughs> forwards, I think. And then there are, there are two versions to the story of the traveler. And so, so um, uh, the baseball player one, I'm pretty sure was one of the logos. And I think that the baseball player was facing backwards. So now the question is the Confederate soldier or the colonel. I am going to say that there was one with a Confederate soldier and so that the colonel is the correct answer in that it was not on one of their logos. Yeah, I'm going to say that. So you're going with C? I'm going with C. And the way you asked that question makes me feel like I got it wrong. And I'm I'm really wavering between those two answers. Pretty confident that B is not the answer. And I'm sort of flipping a coin between A and C here. Well, you've already... So, You've already given your answer, and you can't take it back. All right, no backsies on this answer. I'm going to go C, final answer. And you will be glad you didn't take it back because that's <laughs> the correct answer. I knew it all along. I was supremely confident the whole time. Okay, so uh, the the reason I the, the way I I started saying that that you think you might have gotten it wrong. Uh, no, it's because I'm actually, as you were talking, I was, I'm on sportslogos.net, a site you might be familiar with. The writer, you said uh, you remembered a player and he was looking backwards. From what I can tell, he's not looking backwards. So you might be thinking of a different logo. Okay. Um, but there's a Confederate soldier in one of these Arkansas Travelers, Travelers logos. And I don't think it was, it was uh, that long ago. I can read to you, Dan, from the story that I wrote on sportslogos.net, my story behind the nickname. And this is – I was picturing this while we were talking here. I said back in – let's see. What year was this? I, in 2015, I wrote this article, so eight freaking years ago, if you can believe it. Another of the team's previous logos plays on a different definition of traveler, the name of Robert E. Lee's horse. With the Arkansas state flag replete with Confederate symbolism and a tie to a Confederate general in the traveler's past, the 2014 brand update endeavored to link several meanings of the term traveler. So there okay, is a so it's not just a Confederate soldier. It's literally supposed to be Robert E. Lee. And yes, it does look like him. But um, boy, how times have changed. Yes. Because, um, <laughs> you just look at what's happening today. Hey, this is not a Studio Simon tidbit. This is actually a an Arkansas Travelers tidbit, an, an, an interesting thing that I remember, this isn't even from my research, I remember this happening, so I didn't even have to look this up. The Travelers also used to have a logo that was their primary logo up until, it looks like 2013, yeah. where it included the phrase, greatest game on dirt. Yes. Now, if I'm remembering co correctly, there was a previous version of that logo where it, it it may not have been used in the logo, but it was the team's tagline. They used to refer to Travelers Baseball as the greatest show on dirt. Mm. Oh. But they got a cease and desist from Ringling Brothers Bar Barnum and Bailey Circus, <laughs> known as the greatest show on earth, mm. to stop using that. And that's when they changed it to the greatest from greatest show on dirt to greatest game on dirt, because now that was two steps away from greatest show on earth. And we're able to use the phrase in this, this um, revised form. So a little, in, I think that's kind of an interesting thing. One of the it things is. we always have to be careful about in the sports branding uh, business is to not infringe on existing trademarks or other types of intellectual property. And, in the eyes of Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus, um, that infringed on their trademark. And I don't know that it ever went to court. I think uh, the travelers were probably just smart and didn't incur the cost of, uh, of an attorney or attorneys and just said, okay, we'll change it. I would think one of the most difficult things about being a logo designer would be trying to discern the difference between a great idea that popped into your head and you can envision this, the final version of this product right in your head and a memory of something that you saw, but can't quite put your finger on and you go and you recreate something that you've actually already seen and that exists out there in the world. I imagine that must happen for designers who are creating something that they think is completely original and it's from some 
deep, deep submerged memory? Well, I can tell you that I've had this conversation with um, with other sports branding professionals. I've actually had some of them. It, it's it's a um, we're, I think we're a pretty friendly fraternity, even though we're competitors. Um, I, I can tell you, one of my be best friends in the world is Joe Bosack, who is. Uh, We've been up against each other for numerous projects, and uh, but we've also done numerous projects together. We've stayed at each other's houses and um, you know traveled with each other. And uh, I know uh, Joe's really good friends with Todd Radom, and so it's it's a pretty friendly fraternity. And I know Joe has sent me stuff he's working on, and says and and will say. Have you seen this before? Something he's done where he's where he's thinking, I feel like I've seen this before, but it's yeah. not. And, and I guess he he's wondering, is it one of these deep seated memories that I'm, I know I'm I'm not trying to steal on purpose, but am I stealing by accident? Mm -hmm. um, I have had occasions where I've done something with th that I know for certain was not some something from deep in my memory banks buried that somehow came to the surface without me necessarily realizing it, where I know for, cer for certain I've come up with an, a visual concept that is, that is that I came up with on my own. And yeah. then I will do a search later just to make sure somebody hasn't done it before and somebody's done it. And yes. I know for certain when I see that logo, I've not seen that one yeah. that had been done before. So it's not so much... You might somebody out there listening might be thinking, well, maybe you did see it before. No, there I know for certain in, in these several instances where this has happened that I know I had never seen that particular logo before, but somebody else had the idea and done it and killed for me what would have otherwise been a really great direction. And I'm bummed out that I can't even present this now. So I haven't created that many logos in my life, but I created the one for the association that I work for. And it was unveiled in 2006, and we're still using it to this day. But uh, I remember that I put a sort of a, a lengthy swoosh through the entire logo that serves as the cross stroke for the letter A in the middle of NAI. And we unveiled the logo at our conference, our annual conference. Uh, that year it was in Wichita, and we were at a Hyatt which does exactly that same thing with the with a swoosh through the letter A. And I remember our vice president for programs getting up on stage after we unveiled the logo and saying, I wonder if Paul Caputo was staying at a Hyatt when he designed that logo. And uh, to this day, people still call it the Hyatt logo. So <laughs> yeah, I can see that happening. So yeah. yeah. Dan, thank you once again. This is always such a treat to get to chat with you. And we'll be back next week with another Studio Simon Stumper or Two Truths and a Lie, replete with Studio Simon tidbits, I'm sure. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me once again. See you next week. <laughs>